All right, we're just getting everything set up. Um, I see there's a few people waiting, and if you can hear us, could you just post into chat that our audio is working? And now, okay, here we go. Are you ready? Awesome. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa, and I'm from pianovideolessons.com. I'm a piano teacher here on YouTube, and I'm here with Emmy. I've got her set up in my studio, and we're doing her first ever live stream. So welcome to uh, Emmy's first live stream. Hi, everyone. And I see that there's 21 people here. Hopefully wow. you can hear us. And um, maybe you've got some questions for Emmy. Now there's 26 people here. Oh my goodness. Right? So people are anxious to say hello to Emmy. So uh, we would love to hear uh, from all of you guys. And to get things started, um, I'm just going to say some nice things about Emmy, I guess. She's actually the person who inspired me to start my own YouTube channel. And uh, it was thanks to her that uh, piano video lessons got started here on YouTube. And it's thanks to me that you guys can see her live today because she was not very keen to <laughs> try this for the first time. She was a little bit nervous. But uh, we've got a few people saying hello. Uh, we've got a hello from Anna Mullins. Hi, Anna. She's saying hello, Miss Emmy. Hope you're doing good. Stay safe. This is just, is this just about crochet? Will you answer questions that are not about crochet? I'll answer whatever I can. She'll answer whatever she can. There you go. Uh, we've got a comment from Sabrina Harrison. She's saying hello. Hi, Sabrina. And we've got a comment from Paula Vance. She says, hi, Emmy, you look awesome. Oh, Paula, thank you. <laughs> And Trish Breslin says hi, Emmy. Oh, Trish, how are you? And we've got Susan Moret. Hi, uh, Susan. She's very. Susan says I'm very excited to be here. And we've got Glenda Humphrey saying hi, Emmy. I hope you're awesome. Hi, Glenda. <laughs> I hope you're awesome too. <laughs> All right. And we've got Darlene Jackson saying hello. Hello, Darlene. Hi, Darlene. Awesome. Okay, so um, if you have questions, oh, did I miss one? Did I say Sonia? Sonia Ordonez is oh, also here. Yeah. Hi, Sonia. Awesome. So uh, I think I said this name wrong. It's Deline. I think I said Darlene. Oh, Celine. Deline. Zeline. No, Daylene. Daylene. Okay. I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce your name. So. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, apparently, um, Carola says it's hard to hear us. She says her volume is up, but she can barely hear us. Oh, dear. So I'm going to see if I can work on that. Okay. It's good to know. Um, also, um, Susan Moret says she doesn't comment much, but she loves you, Emmy. Thank and you. And Mildred says, hi, good morning. Hello. And Ingrid is here from South Africa. Oh, hi, Ingrid. And uh, she's got questions about blocking crochet. I don't oh, see if great. you have any tips. Yes, so, I do. Meanwhile, I'm just going to bring the microphone a bit closer to see if this will help us. So that is the microphone. Um, and so maybe if Corolla can let us know if you can hear us any better yet, that would be helpful. And otherwise, I'm just going to go into my settings and see if I can't fix it. Um, and... Uh, Delina says it's okay I pronounced her name wrong that it happens all the time, I suppose. Um, and I've got Maria Ines Eguia and she says she loves your nice, nice tutorials and she's in Argentina. Thank you. Thank you for watching from Argentina. And we've got La Shera Crochet saying hi everyone. Um, and Monica Gonzalez is in Vero, Italy. Wow. Thank you for joining us. All right, so uh, Delilah says she has earbuds and the sound is low. So oh. I'm going to see if I can fix the sound quality. This is always the way, isn't it? We try to get everything set up and then um, things don't always go the way they plan. So I'm just going to mess with my sound settings here and see if I can increase your audio. Manage the sound devices. Do, do, do. All right, so um, I think we'll switch inputs maybe, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, OK, 
Okay, so obviously we're working on sound. Just give us a quick second, people, and we'll see what we can do here. Let's see if, um, let's see. Oh, yes, it does look very low. Let's go to this one. All right, I bet you can hear us now. It might be not the best audio, but it might be louder at least. Um, can you guys let us know, is this audio better? And uh, in the meantime, there's a couple more people who've made some comments. Um, we've got um, Old Lady Too Fast from or New Orleans. Oh. We've got Pamela's Crochet and Knit Corner from California. Oh, great. Welcome. She's a big fan, it says. Welcome. And we've got Sharon Grossman. She says, you're the best. I've oh, hi, Sharon. i so much from you. Oh, thank you. And we've got Alison Turner from Cornwall in the UK. Oh, in the UK. And thank she you. She says that she loves all your tutorials. Thank you so much for joining today. All right, guys. Can you let us know if you can hear us better now? I'm hoping that's the case. So if you just want to post in the comments if the audio is any better, hopefully it is. Um, and then we're going to get right down to it. Um, there's some new comments here. Um, wow, a whole bunch more. So we've got um, Paula Vance can't stay. She's going to go see her niece, but she wishes she could Aww. stay. And uh, Tabitha Aaron says, me and Emmy go way back. Go, good to see you live. So. Hi, Tabitha. <laughs> um, and then Trish Breslins, she says she's been watching you for seven years. Oh, Trish is a darling. And Mildred is your biggest fan from Marino Valley. Lots of biggest fans are here today. Yeah, nice. And Anna Mullen says the volume is perfect. Okay, good. Oh, great. Um, audio is fine. That means we can get started. Awesome. All right. Sorry about the delay. Um, well, before we started today, Emmy was saying that um, one of the one of the things she wanted to make sure that we did was honor your time. And since you're here on time, we wanted to start on time. So if you have any questions for Emmy about crochet, um, I will be sure to pass them on to her. And she's going to do some demonstrations for us uh, and answer any questions that you might have. So um, did you want to talk about tips for blocking your crochet items? Okay. Is there anything specific that you wanted to know about blocking? Well, and generally, how do you, what, what do you do when you block? Um, in crochet I'm not very patient so I don't soak my garment I just lay it on a nice thick towel and I spritz it with water I smooth it down with my hands and get it in shape and then I let it dry that way and if I'm in a really big hurry I put it on my ironing board and I hold the iron above just above not on it above it and I steam it and then I smooth it out and I let it dry that way all right. I don't know if that helps, but... Maybe it does. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, any other questions you have for Emmy, you can just go ahead and pop them into the comments. Um, everyone says the volume is good, and um, Gianna Kelly is here in Tennessee. Oh, hi there from Tennessee. And she said she loves your videos. All right, so why don't you go ahead, okay. Emmy, and give us a few crochet tips, and I'll, I'll let you know what the questions are as they come All in. All right. Well, one of my tips is to keep your yarn from rolling all over the floor if it's a ball. I just put it in a just a kitchen bowl and then you can pull your yarn up as you like and your ball is going to stay right there and it won't move around. Even if you are using a ball that's got you're pulling your yarn out from the center of the skein, again it just holds your ball nice and steady and you can pull your yarn out. So that's one tip that I use a lot. Oh, that's a good tip. Hmm. I like that one. Um, Delilah Gillis has joined us. She says that she's 73 and she learned to crochet from your tutorials. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? And we've got a hello from uh, Evelyn Ojul. Hello, Evelyn. Glad you could make it. Nice. Um, and we've got Linda Mayo. She's here from Winnipeg. Oh, from Winnipeg. Yes. A also fellow in Canadian. Nice. And uh, she loves all your videos, your recipes, your drawing, and your knitting, etc. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. All right, so uh, did you want to do some crochet for us, Emmy? I could do a crochet hat. Okay. And what kind of hat are you going to crochet for us today? I think it's just, this is just a baby hat, and it's very quick. Okay. Because it's worked with thick yarn. Or, so you could use this thick yarn, 
or you can use two strands of worsted weight yarn or one strand of any kind of fun yarn. That is fun yarn. What kind of yarn is that? That's eyelash yarn. Look at that. Wow. It looks like eyelashes. You need to go closer here. Okay. Yeah. So that's eyelash yarn. Any kind of fun yarn. And another strand of worsted weight yarn. And of course, when you're working with something this large, you have to go with a nice large hook. So I usually use my nine millimeter. And if you, people watch my videos, they know I love my nine millimeter crochet hook. So you're going to start with a slip knot. And you pull that up. And I'm just going to move my yarn off camera there. Okay, so usually you're st you could start with a magic ring, but I usually just start with chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then you slip stitch to join in the very first stitch. So is it harder to find your first stitch when you're working with the fluffy yarn? It is a little bit. Sometimes I will take my hook like that and open it up, and then I can get in there easier. Okay. So then you chain two, and that's the equivalent to the height of a double crochet. And because I didn't start with the magic ring, I usually hold my yarn end along the outside while I'm working, and then when I'm done, I can just pull that yarn end and close up this hole. Okay. So for this hat, we make 11 double crochet in the ring. And I know you can't see the ring, but there it is. So we make 11. Am I still centered? You are. Oh, 11 double crochet in my ring. I'm nervous, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm fiddling with my yarn because I'm nervous. All right, let me get my yarns here. Um, Evelyn is wondering what letter the nine millimeter is. It's an M. M. Let me see. Uh, yeah, you have to go up above you. It's M. Yeah, my camera's in a different place than Emmy's yeah, camera, so she, right. she's it's up there. There it is. It's an okay. so nine millimeter is an M. Yes, and I'm going to make eleven double crochet in the ring. I'm just going to go ahead, and if you have questions in the meantime, please post them. Yeah, I'll be keeping my eye on the questions, and I'll let you, Emmy know if, oh, we, good. if she has more questions. Oh, now I lost count of how many I have. One, two, three. Okay. Yes, it's Four. hard to count and talk at the same time. I'm really nervous. Gee whiz. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> Ingrid said thanks for the answer on blocking, and... She's going to do the lying flat and spritz. And she says for a big blanket, does it work the same? Yes. Um, I know it's hard to find a, pl a place to block a blanket. But the best place to block a blanket is on your bed. That's the biggest flat surface that you have in the room that's not usually filled with other things. So if you don't have a large floor surface, you can use your bed. Just put a large tablecloth or something so that your bed doesn't get wet. And then go ahead and block right on the top of your bed. And again, I lost track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, who knew I was going to be so nervous? Well, it's it's a normal thing to feel anxious and nervous when you try, try something new. Especially doing something new, yeah. Yeah, I think we can all relate to that. And also, that yarn is very pretty. It is a little bit and tricky. And tricky to work with. Yeah, it's tricky. Especially using two strands. I think that was ten. And um, 11. Nice. 11. Now this works up very quickly. As you can see, that's my first row, and I've already got quite a big circle here. So then you're going to find your chain two, and you're not going to slip stitch into the chain two. You're going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. How and do you, you tell the difference between the chain two and the first double crochet? Well, because the chain two, not you're not going to be able to see that in here. Mm -hmm. The chain two is just sort of all by itself. Okay. And then the double crochet is sitting on top up here of okay. something else, you know, more yarn. I always wondered about that. Yeah. So you're slip stitching? And that's a slip stitch. Okay. So I've slip stitched. I always turn, and sometimes people chain three for a double crochet, but I always find that leaves a little gap there in a hole. So I always ever only chain two for a double crochet. Okay. So I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to make two double crochet, in each stitch all the way around and that's going to give me 22 stitches okay do you this little hat is worked up in not very many rows i think it's four rows and you're and you're whoops forgot to do my second double crochet 
in that stitch in the same stitch right so you don't have to count this you just have to put two in each one yep just make two in each stitch now my yarn's all tangling up on the floor you should have put it in a I'm not in using a ball, in a bowl. I should use it I should put it in a bowl shouldn't I uh, so is this a pattern that's available somewhere or? it is it is in my Ravelry store okay does it's it just called baby hat number one baby hat number one in her Ravelry <laughs> store not really uh it hasn't got a number most of my patterns have numbers I'm just gonna type that into the chat here here Ravelry store and it's called baby hat number one yeah baby hat number one am I still centered um yeah you're looking good all right great so I'm making two double crochet in each stitch. I know you can't see my stitches, but I can sort of see them there. That's my top of my stitch. Hmm. So I'm working into the tops of my double crochet. And I'm making two double crochet in each stitch. And as you can see, it works out very quickly. Look, I've only worked, it's only my second row and I've already got almost the top of the hat finished. Nice. And Ingrid says, Please don't be nervous. Oh. We're all friends here. <laughs> well, thank you, and Ingrid. And she takes her hat off for you for doing this because she'd never be able to do what you do, and you're doing great. Well, I would never be able to do this live stream without the help of my wonderful daughter because <laughs> she's the one with the recording studio and the expertise. I am technology challenged, and she knows everything about technology. She's my go-to person when I have a problem. Wow. She has to come and help me out. Listen, you've been my go-to person when I've had a problem my whole life. So ah, there you go. <laughs> so, so there's my chain two, and I'm not going to double. I'm not going to slip stitch into the chain two. Okay. I'm going to go right over to my double and so again. If you find your chain two, it's skinny. Okay. And then when you find your double crochet, it's fat. Okay. So you're slip going to stitch into slip the top stitch of your double. into the top of that double crochet. So that's two rows. That's two rows. Yeah. Wow, looks like a snowball. And that's the only increase we have to do because this is for a baby hat. That's already ready to be the top of the baby's head. Right. So, Babies have very tiny okay. heads. Okay. So now I'm just going to double crochet in each stitch around, and I will still have 22 stitches at the end of the row. Nice. So chain two, and I always turn. And the reason I always turn is if you if I don't turn, maybe other people don't have this problem. My work has a tendency to kind of gravitate to the side. So if I chain two and I turn, I don't know why, but that doesn't happen. So I'm just going to make one double crochet. Now see, I'm getting caught in my metals. Okay, one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And I will have 22 at the end of the row. Do we have any more questions? I don't see any more questions oh. right now. Well, I guess they're okay watching. Everybody's watching. A hat being made. Yes. This little hat is going to have ties, and then you can put a tassel at the end. I mean, I don't usually like ties on a baby hat, but if you're just using it for photography, then that's fine. You're just going to have it on for a few, few moments. And if you're making it for a baby to actually wear, you could eliminate the ties. Because the ties are very easy, and you could just not make those. Can you remind us of what you're doing in this row? This is one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Okay. So one double crochet oh. in each stitch all the way around. And I think everybody probably knows what a double crochet is. If not, yarn around the hook, insert into the next stitch, pick up the yarn and pull it through, Pick up the yarn, pull it through two loops, pick up the yarn, pull it through two loops. And I'm going to continue around. Ah, uh, yes, I see there's a question from Anna Mullins. Okay. I'll get to that. Um, can, can you can you do it while you while you count? Can I what? Would you like the question? Oh, like, sure. While you're working? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so Anna says she has all of the supplies that she needs to paint her countertop from your tutorial. Oh, wow. And she said uh, she's had it for about three months now. Yes. And she's she says there's no turning back once she gets started, so she wonders if there's any last-minute tips that you could give before she gets started painting her countertop. Well, because it's acrylic paint, which I assume that's what you got, is it? Probably. I'm going to go on the premise that it is. Okay, I'm at the end of my row. Again, I'm not going to slip stitch into the chain. I'm going to slip stitch into the first. Double crochet. Open it up. I'm paying attention. Slip stitch. Yeah, you <laughs> are. <laughs> into the first double crochet. Now look at that. Yeah, it's cute. That little hat is almost done. Super fluffy. So let me just check my... I want to make sure I say exactly what's in the pattern. 
because sometimes I confuse Chain people. Chain one. So I did my 11, so I did my three. And I'm going to repeat that row one more time. One more time. Okay, so have you got tips for an Anna Mullins? Okay. So if you're going to do your countertop, because it's acrylic paint, you're really not committed. You just have a bucket of water and a, a scrubby cloth and get started and just do a little area maybe. If you don't like it, I'll scrub it off. It's not You're not committed until, until it it's dry. That's yeah? true. So that's a great part, tip there. So if you don't like it, you just... And if you are all finished and you don't like it, you just paint it all over paint again. Paint it all over again. Just paint it a solid color and start all over. Right on. There's not usually any mistakes with um, with those kinds of projects. Right. So as long as you're using a washable acrylic paint, um, doesn't really matter if you want to if you want to wash it off. And Anna says that yes, yeah, she is using acrylic. Yes. Well, that's great. Then if you don't like it, you'll know pretty quickly whether you like it or not. And then you can just wash it off. And I, I that's how I practiced on my kitchen floor. I painted my kitchen floor actually like that. And I have a big kitchen floor. <laughs> and I washed it off several times before I committed myself. I would do about eight tiles. And then I would look back and see if I liked it. If I didn't, and sometimes it was dry. So in that case, I would just get a... Um, one of those scrubby sponges and just scrub it. Like and if it didn't scrubber. come off right away, if you just soak it and let it sit for a while, it'll all come off. It, it's not really a commitment that you're stuck with. Nice. Am I still centered? Yeah, you're looking okay. good. So I'm just doing one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. I've got 22 stitches all the way around. So I am working that way. This hat's going to be done pretty quickly. Yeah, And I'll go on and tell you some tips that I have that I usually use in my crocheting because I've been crocheting for a long, 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 long time. Yeah. <laughs> a long, long time. Uh, Anita says you're the best. Oh, thank you so much, Anna. Anita. Anna, I'm oh, sorry. Anna. Oh, well, thank you so much, Anna. And um, I saw um, Monty Silva is here and uh, Cindy is here. She said thanks so much for this tutorial. She's enjoying the baby hat tutorial. Oh, great. Thank you so much for joining us. Wouldn't it be nice if they could speak too? I know. It'd be great. Well, if you want to have them on as guests, we, we could you, they could speak like a Zoom call. But um, maybe you should have a Patreon, and maybe you should have Zoom calls with your fans. What no. do you think, you guys? Should she have should she have Zoom calls with her fans if if she had Patreon? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking. I will, I'll have to teach her all. You're of that. talking in a foreign language right. to me now. Foreign language. So uh, if anybody's keeping track of how many stitches I've done. They may have seen that I didn't do as many as I should, but it doesn't really matter for this hat. And it's just for a demo. And the Well, it's okay proper if it's smaller amounts, at the bottom anyway, because it'll grab the baby's head The nice proper and amounts tight. are all in the, pat in the, the written pattern. Right on. So there's my last row of double crochet. Nice. And now I'm going to do one row of single crochet, and then I'll move on to the ties. But that's a cute little hat. Nice. I should have brought my little doll model, and I could have put it on the baby, but okay. no. Okay, so... Now I'm going to do one row of single crochet. So for single crochet, I'm going to chain one and turn. And I'm going to make one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And to make a single crochet, I simply insert the hook into the stitch, pick up the yarn and pull it through. Then I pick up the yarn and pull it through both loops. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet all the way around. And then I'll be ready to make the ties. All right. So Trish says it's so cute. Oh, it's cute. It is cute. It's very fluffy. It's very fluffy. Yeah. Yeah. And Anna said she would love to Zoom with you. So yeah, she's agreeing that it would be nice if they could talk too. Yeah. Because another thing is we have a delay. YouTube puts a 20 second delay. Oh, so do we? It oh. takes them 20 seconds to hear the first thing that oh, we I say. I did not know that. So when they give comments, we, it, we answer them 20 seconds later. <laughs> I see. Right on. So that might be hard if it was t if it was speaking. Uh, not if it was Zoom. <laughs> um, Rhonda Online seventy two says she's got to go to work, oh, but she'll watch later gee. if you're still here. Hugs. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We're very grateful. I wouldn't want to sit here doing this all by myself because I was so nervous that no one was going to show up. She thought no one would show up. Oh, oh Emmy. Oh, mom. <laughs> There's 45 people watching right now. Oh, my goodness. 45 people. Thank yes. you so much, 45 people. Mm -hmm. You've made my day. 
I'm almost finished this row and then I'm going to move right on to the tie without even interrupting or cutting my yarn. All right. Which is going to be very easy. And you'll say, why didn't I take, think of that? I'm already going all the way around. Nice. Slip stitch to join. Now there's my little hat already finished so in only good. just those few little rows. And there I am and I'm going to go on to my tie. So all I'm going to do is chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's my tie. And I need my scissors. scissors. Here they are. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not at my home. I'm at someone else's, so I had to bring everything. So then you're just going to pull that stitch through like that. And I just brought a, a tassel along, and it's one that I've made. I have a tutorial on my channel on how to make a tassel. So you'll have these two strands when you make your tassel, and you can just go ahead and tie that onto the end of your tie. And you'll have finished that side of your hat. So to make the other tie, you're simply going to fold that like this so that your tie is on this side. And then you go right over to here. And you insert your hook. Pull your yarn through. And I always like to lock it in with one stitch with both the working yarn and those little two yarn ends. Oh, that's and then a good later, idea. I will weave those in, but that locks it in. So that is equivalent to one stitch. So I'll do seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I will cut my yarn. Pull it through. And I only brought one tassel, so mm. I will only have one tassel for the demo. So the tassel would get attached there. And then you would just attach another one on that side. Mm, cute. And there you go. That's how quick and easy it oh, is, that is so to work cute. with these wonderful size nine hooks and two strands of yarn, which is one of my favorite things to do, mostly because I'm crocheting constantly, designing constantly, and I don't have time to be spending a lot of time. So I usually try to work out my patterns to be made as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. But that's a quick and easy little hat that you can make. Of course, you can make it for adults. You just have to add more stitches on your next row after the row of 22. Right on. So that's one quick and easy hat that you can make. Nice. So while you were crocheting, um, Susan Moret yes. asked if maybe someday you could do an easy harmony blanket. Do you know what a harmony blanket is? Oh, I do not know what that is. I do not know what that is either. I'm just going to turn our webcam back on and we can be in the, in the, in the corner here. So here we are. Oh, and the other thing you could do uh, uh, with your hat is add a little crocheted flower to it. Oh, that's a good idea yeah. to dress Just it up. Just dress it up that one, that little bit more. It's amazing now. I mean, there's the hat without the, the flower. It's cute, but you just add a little flower and it just gives it a little pop. It does just give it a yeah. little pop. Um, so also let me just look through the comments here and see. Um, oh, Someone had some trouble with YouTube. They said YouTube kept telling them 29 minutes until they, we were live. So oh, darn they YouTube. were just sitting there waiting. <laughs> darn, YouTube darn is, YouTube. YouTube is funny. Well, we set up this live stream and Emmy went to look at for her it, on her channel. And we, it, you can't see your own live stream. No, once I they're couldn't set up. see it. So that is so funny. Um, Mama Darling says, I have a daughter. Uh, her birthday is in October. And she's making her your spider sh web shawl. Oh, you just did a spider web shawl tutorial. Oh, I did do a spider web shawl. It's on my on my channel. Right. Yeah. She said her daughter is goth, and her birthday's in October. Oh, so okay. So she's gonna make the make the uh, very nice the spider web. Yeah. And let's see. Oh, Susan Moret says that is a beautiful hat. Emmy. It is cute. Yeah, I like it too. I don't have a baby to put it on anymore. Right. My babies are, as you can see, all grown up. <laughs> Uh, and then all grown up and 50 something oh shush oh. <laughs> i'm just a 30, or just a baby i'm just 30 with many years experience oh i see 30 plus let's say that with many 30 years plus. experience um maria's miscellany says what a nice surprise to see you live emmy i've been watching you quietly for years and um ingrid Coatsy is asking for a toddler size blanket 
What's the measurement in centimeters that you'd recommend? For toddler? Yeah, toddler blanket. Well, because I'm in Canada and I should know centimeters, but I'm too old to learn something new. <laughs> I really only know inches. So what are the inches? <laughs> but 36 by 36 is a good size, so, or 40 by 40. So a meter by a meter yeah. then yeah. for a toddler yeah. size blanket. Yeah. So 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Yeah, that's centimeters. a good size for a toddler blanket. All right. And let me see what other comments we have. Luna Lee is asking, is this your daughter? Yes, I'm yes. Emmy's daughter. <laughs> She's my uh, firstborn. My name's Lisa, and I have a YouTube channel here as well. It's called Piano Video Lessons, and I'm a piano teacher. She um, teaches piano. She teaches piano in real life, I and do. she has her piano channel. Uh, you can learn to learn, play piano for free by watching her channel. You can. <laughs> and it's always on the right side of my... If you look down on my channel, on my main channel, I think she's the first or the second, because she also has a, a Learn to Draw channel. channel. So she has Draw Kids Draw. No, no. Nope. Doodle Draw Doodle Art. Doodle Draw Art <laughs> she has, and she has piano video lessons. Right on. Um, and so her, Susan has described the Harmony Blanket. It says the rows have easy, different crochet stitches. Oh, so kind of like a sampler. I guess so. A hmm. Harmony Blanket, she's called it. But oh. it has rows of easy, different crochet stitches. So maybe you could make a oh, Harmony I Blanket sometime. I certainly will do that. I nice. will do that. Nice. All right. So what are some tips you have then for brand new people who are just getting started to crochet? Okay. Do you want to talk about some things that are popular or... Um, Number one, let's ask a question of the viewers. Okay. Who knows which stitch takes the most amount of yarn? So let's see. All right. So it's going to take 20 seconds. Okay. So while we're waiting... You can guess which stitch uses the, the most, most yarn. yarn. In so, crochet. So if you look at a pattern that has a lot of this stitch in it, you're yeah, going to need a lot of yarn. You'll know you need a lot more yarn. I, yeah. I have a guess, but I'm going to wait until people make guesses. Okay. Let's see what they say. I'll, I'll just give a hint from what my guess is. Okay. My guess is that it might have, um, it might be something to do with food. The, the name of the stitch might be a food. It might be what? A food. Something food. you eat. Yeah. The name of the stitch might be something you eat. There's a crochet stitch that's yeah. the name of food? It's something you eat. Yes. You've taught it on your channel. What? Um, okay, so people are guessing single crochet and single crochet and puff stitch and triple crochet and puff stitch and half double crochet and triple crochet. Well, those smarty pants that said single crochet are exactly right. It is the single crochet that uses the most yarn. It's the most dense stitch. And so now I'm going to ask you which stitch uses the least amount of yarn. Which stitch uses the least? So um, other people, Linda Mayo guessed the one that I was thinking, which was popcorn. Oh, popcorn. popcorn oh, that would, that would use a lot. But I was just thinking of the basic stitches. Oh, the basic yes, stitches. Yes, popcorn stitch would use a lot of All yarn. All right, so now we're asking you to guess which stitch uses the least amount of yarn if you see a pattern with a lot of these stitches in it. Yes, you'll say you'll know you can get more mileage out of your yarn if you use this stitch. Right on. <laughs> well, um, Java Zeb guessed the slip stitch, and she's probably right. That does use the least amount of yarn, but you can't make anything out of slip stitches. So you know what? I have never tested that. I bet you have just, not. All you have to do is slip. It's just a little slip. It's true, but it's dense. It's very dense. But it doesn't. But it, compared to making a single crochet, where you have to loop and go and pull. Well, that's true. So but you're asking uh, which pa if a, this pattern is made with a lot of these stitches. Yeah, I mean you can, you can make something all with yarn. all slip stitches. You can make a pattern with all slip stitches, but it will be very, very dense. All right. And tight. It all won't right. have any stretch. It'll be very tight. Okay. Anyone have any idea how, which stitch? So we've got some guesses. Oh, um, good. We've got people guessing the half double crochet and the triple crochet. And someone must be from a different, they're saying treble, which is the same as the triple yes, crochet. Yes, the treble and triple are, triple are the and same. And I'm seeing the half double again. I'm seeing more half doubles. So we've got single, triple, or treble, and half double as guesses. Okay, well, I won't make anybody wait. It actually is the triple crochet. That uses the least amount, and it also works up as very quickly. So that's the one that uses the least amount of yarn. I wish it was my other question. Oh, which stitch is the quickest to work up? What do you mean? Well, when you're, let's say you have a, a hat to crochet, and it's all single crochet, and you have one that's all double crochet, and you have one that's all triple crochet. Okay. So 
which which one hat you... would be done first? If you and I both started a hat, <laughs> you would be done first because I'm a very <laughs> slow crocheter. You'd be done tomorrow. <laughs> I'd be and done. I'd be done as quickly as quickly as I did this. <laughs> so, if two people who are at the same skill level, right, were crocheting hats, and one was a single crochet, one was a double, and one was a triple, and it's the same hat. It's exactly we both the same. Make yeah, a, we're a making hat, the same, same hat. size of yeah. hat. Right. Okay, yeah. so the question is, if the hat is the same size and the crochets are the same speed, but they're using different stitches to make the hat, which person will finish first? And the choices of stitches are what? A single, single double, double, or, or triple. Treble. Okay. Or triple. All right, guys. <laughs> so what do you think? Who's going to win? Which which crocheter of those three will be the fastest? You'll be a winner. You won't win anything, but you will be a winner. <laughs> um, right on. So uh, Anna Mullins is wondering what the food stitch was. It was the, the popcorn stitch. That's the one I was thinking about. Um, and Java Zeb said you can make purse handles with a slip stitch. You can make what? Purse handles. I don't wear. I didn't wear my hearing aid. That's okay. Purse, a uh, purse handle. Oh yeah, that would be stitch. absolutely great to make purse handles. Right, because you wouldn't have all that stretch. Right, because I, I said I don't think you can make anything with a slip stitch, but that's it's well, kind of, you can. You can yeah. make uh, bracelets and yeah, purse well, handles. I'm not a very headband. Very good crochet. Things that you really want, not much stretch. Right on. Okay, so um, we've got some guesses coming through here. Okay. Um, we've got uh, people guessing. Double, triple, double, triple, triple, double, single, and double, double. All right. Well, I always thought it was a single crochet because, of course, you're just doing that one, that one motion. But somebody else, not me, uh, did a study on that, and it's the double crochet. Right. And apparently, it's you're done much quicker if you're working double crochets. Well, and that's a lot of people guess the double. Interesting, so they isn't were it? right as yes. well. Yes, they were right. All that's right. right. So now, um, let's what else? see here. Well, I wonder if anybody knows how you make a perfect circle in crochet. It's really a quite easy formula. A perfect circle. Yep. Uh, we have 60 viewers right now, Emmy. Six, we have 60 viewers. Oh my goodness, 60 viewers. 60 Thank viewers. you so much for coming. <laughs> I don't feel so alone anymore. <laughs> I thought I was going to come here and there would be zero showing under the screen. <laughs> Not that I would have noticed it because I don't have my glasses on, but I'm going to put them on so yeah. I can at least see the screen. So you can see right here it shows. Yes. Oh, now it's 55. It was 60. Oh, my goodness. Thank just, you so much. All you people who have dropped in and taken time out of your day to come in and visit with them, my daughter and I. Right. Okay, right. so someone's saying the magic ring is a good way to make a perfect circle. Linda Mayo. Oh, oh, I meant, uh, it, let's say you need to crochet a circle like a placemat, and you want it to lay flat on your surface. Yes. And how would you maintain a perfect circle without it curling up or rippling? Okay. Nate. Nice and flat, a nice flat circle. All right, so um, as someone says it's made with a magic circle, but uh, how about if you tell us then? Because I think... Okay, well, every additional row, you add 12 stitches. So if you started out with 12 stitches in the first row, you have 24 in the next. If you have less than 24, it's going to want to cup up a little bit. The next row, you add 12 again. So you just... So it would, if you start with 12, you add 12 each time? Yes, if you start with 6, you, you, add, you, you do 12 in the next row, oh. and then 24 in the next. Oh and then 36, and then 48. So you, every row you add 12 stitches evenly spaced around, and you will always have a perfect circle if you do that. Right on. So Trish says she has to go, but oh. she had fun. Oh, thank you, Hugs, Trish. Emmy. And yes, we have um, some people, Seema Anand says, increase the stitches in every row by the number of stitches you start with a magic circle. So Okay, she's... so if, if you start with six single crochets or six double crochet in your magic circle, yes, you would double that, and then you would increase by 12 for each additional row. All right, so 12 is the magic number. 12 is the magic number. All right, so Evelyn Ojuru is saying, <clears throat> can you do a tutorial on a bridal dress? Because of the virus, it's getting hard to shop for bride things. Well, I know she can sew a bridal dress because she sewed mine. That's and true. And she covered it in beautiful beadwork, and it was amazing. Oh, um, 
I stopped keeping track of the hours at 75 hours. I had been sewing beads on for 75 hours. I decided that was <laughs> that was enough beads. I was not going. I I still kept sewing on beads. I just stopped counting. Stopped counting. <laughs> So, um, I'm not sure what kind of bridal dress. Would you crochet a bridal dress? Yes, there are some lovely bridal dresses. And, I mean, they're not usually bouffant. They're generally just a slim fitting. And then you just wear a long white slip under it, so it doesn't even matter how open the okay. stitches are. If there's huh. anything lacy, yeah, it's lovely. Well, you should do a dress that could be well, I know a bridal dress. Well, I know Anu, who has a channel on YouTube, she did a beautiful dress. It was not for a bridal, but I remember commenting on her video that it would make a lovely bridal dress, and she agreed. It was a beautiful dress. It was a work of art. She's You can find her channel by typing in Anu, A-N-N-O-O, and she does have a beautiful dress that would be a great substitute for a bridal dress. Awesome. All right. Um, so somebody at Carola is still having trouble on hearing us, but I don't know why other people have said that the audio is good. Oh, well, so, we moved the... Yeah, but we weren't using that mic anymore. Oh, okay. Just let me look at my mixer here. It says mic audio too, and I turned off the one that wasn't working, but... According to my volume, it looks like it's pulling in high volume. I don't know if I've got something else in play here that's mm. changing the volume. But um, I think other people could hear us, though, because someone did mention earlier that the volume was fine. And uh, Gianna Kelly is saying, or Gina, oh, Anu has beautiful things. Oh, she does. That's apparently the channel, Anu. She does. Well, I'm going to give you another little tip while we're awesome. just waiting for more questions. And that is, I'm going to put all my bags down on the floor. That is that you can turn any hat into a bag. There's a hat that's been crocheted. Just a little hat, just an ordinary hat. And, oh, sorry, here we go. So you can see. If I sewed these little bamboo handles there, I'd have a little bag. Cute. And then you could crochet a flower and add that, you would have a bag. That's an easy trick. So yeah. what if I was out wearing a hat and I decided I needed a bag? I should just take my hat off. Sure, there you go. <laughs> Use it as a bag. Uh, well, when I was growing up, my mother always used her apron for that. I used She'd my... go out to do anything she would... Right turn her apron, pull her apron up, and fill it up with things, and I she'd come this, in the house with a full apron. I do the same thing in the garden. Oh, when there I'm you go. my cherry tomatoes, if I didn't bring a bowl, I use my apron to pick... Your shirt. Yeah, the bottom <laughs> of my shirt. <laughs> there okay, you go. fair enough, yes. Now, this is another hat. Now, this is this is probably even a tip that I can add. Is that a this, crochet tutorial? Did you make a tutorial for that mm, hat? I may have many years ago, but I don't think that pattern is anywhere. You can see it was just a camouflage hat, and I just went through my yarn stash and would cut a bundle of yarn ends and then pass it through one of the stitches and just tie a square knot. And I made this hat with lots of dangles and, and I don't know what it would be good for. Sometimes people like to have a hat like that. So that's an easy way to dress up a plain hat. Just tie some of your yarn ends and da dazzle it up with some yarn. Very nice. But again, you can see that if I sewed some bamboo handles here on this hat, I'd have a pretty fancy little hat. That would be a pretty fancy little bag, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a pretty fancy little <laughs> bag. <Both. laughs> bag, yes. Um, and if you wanted to just attach a brooch, there you go, you could attach oh, a brooch. it's hard to see the brooch in the, in the video oh, because it's, it's a camouflage is. brooch. It just, yes, it's true, it is a camouflage brooch. It's a rose. So you could add a brooch there, or, well, this doesn't match in color, but you could crochet a flower and add that on the front. Maybe this one would go better. Nice. Well, it's not the same color, but oh, anyway. it goes. Or you could just use it plain like that. Sew on some <coughs> handles. So it could be a bamboo handle like that. Or it could actually be a, a round handle too, you know. Or you could actually use some of the videos that I have for making purse handles. Like this is the easiest purse handle to make. You have... A chain chained with about five strands of yarn. Let me move these away. And you just add key rings on the bottom. And then you can sew those onto your bag. So let's use the gray one as a sample here. So you can see that if you had a large bag, you would sew these on each side. Like that. 
And again, you could add your flower and you'd have turned a hat into a bag. Nice. So, I so hope people Sheena found... says a wonderful idea, a hat into a bag. Yes. And uh, Christine Jones says another great tip. And Gina says, oh, super cute. My granddaughter would love that. I think she means the big fluffy hat with all of the... All yes, of the, with all, all the, the little... Tassels uh, tied yeah. on. Right on. So Ingrid uh, Kotze says, is there a way to line a bag that you crochet if you don't have a sewing machine without the lining sliding around inside? Yes, there is. Let me get my little bag here again. So you're going to have your, your purse and you're going to place that down on your fabric. I'm sorry, what was the what were you answering? Can you just repeat what that is? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, to line a bag, you're going to place your your finished purse on your fabric. Let's say I have my fabric underneath here. I did bring a piece of something here. So let's say this is my fabric. So you're going to fold your fabric in half like that. Place your bag on your fabric so that the fold is at the bottom of the bag. And then you're just going to cut down the two sides. And with some strong thread, you're just going to sew like an overhand stitch down this side and this side. Then you can tuck that into your bag and sew it in all around. Oh, I'm off camera. <laughs> sew it in all around the top edge. And then if you don't want it to to move around, you can just take a couple of little stitches through your yarn, through your hat with the same color yarn and just go through the, the actual lining. <coughs> Sorry. And that'll line your purse very quickly and very minimal sewing. Just a few little whip stitches down the two sides and then you'll have your lining done very quickly. Nice. I hope that helps. All right. So that's your answer, Ingrid. Um, uh, Sheena says, you have magical fingers, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Kimberly Jones Baxter says, Emmy, do you have an adult crochet pants pattern? If not, would you consider making a tutorial for adult pants? I have an, a, a tutorial on my channel for adult shorts. So you would, they're pink. There is another tutorial for some lace shorts. So if you made that one, you'd have lace pants like we had back in the day <laughs> with the go-go dancing. Or you could um, follow the pink shorts pattern. And that one is done all in single crochet, so it's a fairly dense pattern. And then just make the legs longer and you would have a pair of pants. Nice. So that is on my channel. I. It should be easy to find. On my channel, on the right, there's a little tiny, mic a little tiny magnifying glass. And if you click on that little magnifying glass, you can enter anything you want in there, and it'll bring it up. There, there it is. Can they see that? Uh, they can't, but I'm gonna put no. it. I'm okay. gonna put the link. Okay. So Lisa is putting the link to the shorts, and you just make those legs longer, <laughs> and you'll have pants. So there's the link to the shorts. And that's the link right there. So yeah, you can make pants and and then you can turn the shorts into pants by just yes. keeping on going. Turn exactly. them into longs. Exactly. Um, and then if you're interested in the lace shorts, I'll put those ones on. Oh, well, as yes, well. there is. Yeah, there's one for so the lace this, shorts. The second link is the lace shorts and um, that would be uh, the same idea. So Ingrid said, oh my word, how easy is that? She was the one who asked the question oh, about great. the lining. Oh, Thank you great. so much, Emmy. I was pulling my hair out on how to fix that lining inside my bag. You're truly talented. Oh, it's just that I've been doing it for a long time and I've probably made all the mistakes that can be made. So I usually have a workaround on it for just about everything. Yeah, Emmy always likes the shortcuts too. So. Oh, sure, I like shortcuts. And uh, so Samantha Nicholson is saying, socks seem so hard to do. Are there any basic no heel kind for short, for socks? In crochet, I guess that's what she's asking. Uh, I guess so. I do have a tutorial on my channel for socks, and the heels are work very simply. And so it, Lisa is just bringing that up right now, and there it is the, right there. This one, the blue. Yep, they're pink with the blue heel, but you do not work the heel separately. It's very easy to do. You just work right across, and then you have a little opening on the back of the heel down the back and you just slip stitch that closed when you're all finished and then your socks are done. So Lisa just posted that video for the socks. And I think there's another pattern for socks, but I don't remember, I think they're colorful socks. 
but th those pink and blue are the pink with the blue heel are easy the heel done in a separate color like that makes it look like it was complicated but no it isn't it's exactly the same as making uh, the slippers that people make with the starting from the toe up it's yes. exactly the same way so it's very simple to do uh, and so Ronnie Launder Londner <laughs> says I'm so glad you're doing this live stream Emmy I'm going to check out Lisa's piano and doodling websites what a talented family well, thanks, Ronnie, for your comments. My brother actually has some YouTube stuff going on, too. So both of Mom's children are on YouTube, and I'm sure if you visit her channel page, you'll see his his channels linked on the side as well. He is a sailor, and he has a sailing vlog called Coast Life, but then he does with his wife. And he also uh, has a drawing channel as well called Draw Kids Draw. That's right. Um, and so, a question then from Sharon Gossman. She okay. said, who taught you to crochet and how old were you when you learned? Let me just turn our face cam back on before you answer that oh question. Oh, dear. Because <laughs> if you're going to answer her question about when you started crocheting, you might as well. Well, I don't actually remember when I started crocheting because it was that long ago. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. Um, you were I, a little girl? I was probably... It's probably about 65 years ago. I probably learned when I was 10. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. So, And I've never been able to really follow a pattern. So I would always have to make up my own patterns. And then when Lisa was born, of course, I practiced on her. I made all kinds of little outfits for her and never had a pattern. So I would have to just design something on the fly. And so that's probably why I've made just about every mistake and no a workaround on them. And um, who taught you? I wish I knew. Do you think it was your mom? My mom crocheted and knitted and sewed and But it did, could have been one of your sisters? And or... did woodworking and she did everything. Um, or one of your aunts? It might have been, we were a lot of children around so may have been one of the others. We always did things in groups so I really don't remember who exactly would have been the first one. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Samantha says the shorts pattern you did a video for those came out great, as well as other projects for us. Thank you so much for the videos. You're awesome. Oh, Samantha, you're <laughs> awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and Ronnie Londner is saying brother too. Wow. Yes, brother has a draw kids draw. That's why I said. Draw Kids Draw when I was saying what Lisa's channel was, but hers is Doodle Draw Art. Right. But um, yes, both of my children can, my goodness, my son and my daughter both can draw anything in almost realistic. Right on. I'm yeah. going to be doing a live stream tomorrow for Doodle Draw Art. Oh, I'm, that's great. I'm, See, she's doing a, a live stream tomorrow on her I Doodle am. Draw it's Art. It's going to be earlier than this one tomorrow. Oh, but, so if uh, anybody wants to learn to draw something, what are you drawing? I'm drawing cartoon things for oh, back to school. Oh, somebody wants to learn to draw cartoons. <laughs> uh, for back to school. Um, and Sharon T says, Emmy, you make things look so easy. I'm enjoying watching your live stream. Well, Sharon, you don't know how happy I am that you joined us because <laughs> I thought I was going to be sitting here talking to myself right. or to Lisa. <laughs> Well, it will be us anyway. Uh, and Maria Ines Iglia is saying, great teacher, Emmy. Oh, thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. Awesome. All right. That's, I think that's, I'm going to scroll back. That's all the questions? I think that's it. I'm just going right. to scroll up and see if I missed anything. We'll move anything. on to something else and show them sure. something else. Okay. All right. This is called the tight stitch in crochet. And it's called the tight stitch for a very good reason. It's quite tight. So this would be great for maybe crocheting a pillow. Or if you really wanted a heavy comforter kind of uh, blanket, you could use this stitch. And it's a lot easier. It's a, not very difficult. It's pretty much the same as a lot of the things that we crochet. So I'm just going to use this bulky yarn, and I'm going to change to my bigger hook, 12 millimeter. And, and what, what letter is that? That is Cut OG. I didn't take. I didn't put the letter down. I'm sorry. I wrote it on my hook because it was very difficult to see, and I don't think it even said the letter. Okay. But it's probably... P? P, because Q is a big, big hook, so... Right. So to make this tight stitch, you're just going to start with a foundation chain. I'll make sure I'm working with the right end of my yarn. Okay. And you start with a chain, and I guess it can be any amount. As a matter of fact, I might as well include another tip while I'm at it. 
let's say that you did work a chain, a foundation chain, and then when you worked all the way across, you found out, oh darn, I did not crochet enough of a chain. You can take your yarn end and just insert your, your hook into that last stitch and then just pull up the yarn and add as many stitches as you need at the end of your row. So I usually do try to leave a long yarn end just in case I run into that problem. And then once you have that worked up, hopefully I, you'll do it better than I did when I added and made that big loop, you can just go ahead and add more stitches at the end of your row. So to start working the tight stitch, I am working with the wrong end, you're going to start, you're going to work alternate front and back post double crochet. So across the first row for front and back post double crochet, it's always just plain double crochets. And usually for a double crochet, it's chain two, but for turning, when you're turning, it's chain three, you skip. But because this is a bulky yarn, I'm going to work down into the fourth stitch and I'm going to make a double crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and double crochet. I won't go all the way across the row because that'll take too long. And I have a few other little projects that I can show you. So you're just going to go ahead and here's another <coughs> tip while I'm working that I'm thinking of at the same time is I often just hold my yarn inside the palm of my hand like this. I don't twist it around my fingers. I know some people find that that they work best with that and whatever works for you is what works. But I always just hold my yarn in my hand like that. I tuck my finger around it and then just bring it around my index finger. And then that just makes the yarn flow smoothly in there in my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work across the row. I'm just gonna do this many. So I've, let's say I've worked across my entire row. Then I'm going to chain three. Again, I chain three. No, I am not going to chain three. I'm telling you for the wrong thing. I like to only chain two when I'm turning on a large item because that way it keeps my edges without stretching or without having a gap in that first stitch. So I'm going to chain two and I'm going to turn. So now I'm going to front post, back post, front post, back post. So to make a front post double crochet, yarn around the hook, and then you come around the front of the next stitch and go behind the post oh. and then pick up the yarn and pull it through. Pick up the yarn, pull it through two, same as you would for a double crochet. Pick up the yarn, pull it through two. So there's my front post double crochet and the next one will be a back post. Yarn around the hook, we'll go from the back, come around the post of the double crochet and then just complete the double crochet the same as you would if it was a regular double crochet. And you can see that you have one sticking out in the front and this other one is in the back. So the next one is going to be a front post. You complete the double crochet. And then the back post. And finish the double crochet. And a lot of people wonder, what do you do with that last one? The same as if it were in the middle of the row. It should be a front post, so I'm going to go into it from here and I'm going to complete my double crochet. Now let me get some yarn up here. Okay, so that's how that would look. So then you're going to chain two, one, two, and you're going to turn. So in this row, you want to do the opposite because that's what gives you this look. You have the opposite of what was on the previous row. Move that away. All right, so that was my chain two and I turn. So I can see very easily that that was a front post because it's protruding toward the front. So that will be a back post. So right yarn around the hook, from the back, around the post, pick up the yarn and pull it through. Then pick up the yarn, pull it through two, pick up the yarn, pull it through two. Now the next one is going to be a front post because see, it's kind of, hiding there toward the back. So I'm going to go in from the front on that one and I'm going to work around the post and I'm going to finish my double crochet. And then you just continue to do that row after row and you get this nice 
kind of a waffle stitch, but it's not a waffle stitch. It even looks a bit like it's woven. It does. It, you could make a great bath mat with this stitch. Okay. Yeah. Or a bag, I suppose, or uh, even a hat. Mm -hmm. like the, I would say you could, if you wanted a really thick winter hat. So that's called the tight stitch in crochet. Nice. Yeah. Um, so Maria Inez Iguez has said before here that you're a great teacher, but she also says that it, your English is so clear. So she uh, likely does not speak English as her first language, so she loves how clearly you communicate. Well, thank you very much. So French much. was my mother tongue, so I only learned to speak English when I was about five or six, and we moved to an English community, and I could not speak one word of English, not one. And I was in grade primary, and my sister was in grade one, so my mom said to the, we went to convent school, that was a story of all of itself, but uh, my mom convinced the uh, nuns to put my sister back a year so that we would both be in the same class. So we, neither one of us could speak a word of English, but at least we had each other, <laughs> and it was a... It was an experience that I wouldn't want to go through again, mm -hmm. but yeah, so, uh, I'm glad she understands me. Uh, Sheena has a question. Okay. She says, can we do crochet applique on chiffon? You can, um, you would really need to use a fine thread, crochet thread. I've got some here because I'm going to show you how to crochet some earrings shortly. So you would... You would need to work your motif first with a fine, well, I think I brought, yes, I did, with a fine hook. So you would need to crochet the motif and then apply it to the chiffon and then with this needle and thread sew all the way around and then afterward turn it over and you can cut away the chiffon behind your motif. And I actually have a video to show how to do that on a shirt. Um, it was applying a flower to the, the chest area on a shirt. So it would have been, Lisa's looking that up to give you the link. And I think it would have been, um, no, that's gonna give you all the appliques. So put um, motif, maybe put motif, that might bring it up. It's a pink shirt and it has a white app. Oh, wait. that is one, but it's not. That one only has a, a shoulder section put in, but the other one is a, a white flower and it's been appliqued on the chest. And then you can cut away from behind and you'll have a you know, see through motif. But it's really difficult to uh, crochet right into the chiffon because you wind up pulling the threads, they pull very easily. So it's best to attach it with by sewing with a needle and thread. All right, and uh, Sojourner Shrink is saying, hi, Emmy. Hello. I really loved your channel for many years. Have you noticed the price of yarn skyrocketing? Um, specialty yarns have always been very, very expensive because, oh my goodness, if you only really realized how much work it is to make yarn. My mother made yarn when we were growing up and it would take hours and hours of spinning that uh, goat's hair, I guess you'd call it hair, um, into yarn. It would take a long, long time. But they, um, the Acadians, which is what I am, I'm an Acadian, they loved having sheep because it was a renewable resource. Every year they sheared the sheep and next year that sheep had another whole supply of yarn for them. Mm -hmm. So they would, um, that was a big tedious job, cleaning it and getting all the little twigs and burrs that were in the in the uh, hair after they had shaved the, the sheep, sheared the sheep. Then, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. But I have not noticed it too much because I have a tendency to reuse my yarn. So. I will unravel things if I'm not going to use them. If I have a blanket that I'm not using very much, I may unravel the whole thing. And of course, I got that habit from my mother because she always did that. Mm -hmm. She always 
unraveled things and made something else. So Susan Moret says, I also love your recipes, Emmy, and I've made a lot of them. Well, thank you. I guess I can't make you a recipe today because <laughs> I didn't bring I didn't bring any ingredients. But um, as you know, I love no cook and quick and only a few recipes. And of course, that was from my mother too because we grew up in the country. We had no electricity. We had no running water. We had to run out to the outhouse. We had nothing really i hate to say but we had each other that was that was the good thing <coughs> so she would um throw together a meal three times a day for seven kids and, and adults and never had a recipe and i remember when she'd make a cake it would be 50 50 beets or mm -hmm. 150 beets we didn't have a mixer because we didn't have electricity so she would beat the cake 150 times and that would be how she would get a fluffy cake. But, yes, yeah, she never had a recipe, so she just threw things together. So I guess, you know, all you can do is ruin it. It's not much of a problem. It's not like it's the end of the world. Right on. And I know if she made a cake and it didn't turn out, well, that one would turn into a pudding. She'd just make a sauce to pour over it. So we've got a hello from Marilise Quinones. Hello, Mary. Marilise. Marilise. Hello, Marilise. And I'm going to miss mention that it's been now one hour and five minutes. Oh, my goodness. So if you have one more thing to okay. share, then well, maybe that will I think will I'll be... just show these uh, quick and easy earrings because they're very easy to make. Oh. And you just make them with crochet cotton and a small crochet hook. And so this one... I made it on a key ring. Before but, you start, just let me, there's one more comment here. Yes. Um, Blind Stitch is Creations Inc. is saying, Hi, Emmy, good afternoon. I love your channel. You're one of my favorite YouTube teachers. Well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. And nice. thank you for joining us today. Nice. So to make an earring, if other crocheters are like me, I'm sure, and we don't always have the supplies that we're looking for when we want to do something because I'm pretty spontaneous and I don't sleep much, so... Sometimes in the middle of the night, I want to crochet, and I don't have, I might not have key rings. I do have a lot of supplies because I do some jewelry beading as well. So if you don't have a key ring, then I'm going to show you how you can make these earrings without having a ring. So I will use the pink because otherwise you won't be able to see my stitches with black. So let me get my, so I'm going to make a ring. To work around so I'm going to do that simply by winding it around my fingers four times let's say four times you could do as many as you wanted so I have this this is going to be my foundation and that's what I'm going to work on just wound it around my two fingers and I'm still holding on to it so then I'll place my hook in and bring that yarn around and I'll make oh I missed bring the yarn oh ah. I think you're missing one loop yeah Okay, bring my yarn around and then com complete it. It's a chain, I guess, to hold it tight. So then you're just going to go ahead and single crochet all the way around this ring. And you're going to squeeze as many single crochet on there as you possibly can. So you just go around and around. I mean, you could do double crochet too if you wanted to. But I'm just going to do a couple here. Gee, okay, here we go. All right, that'll give you an, an idea. You're just going to work. Uh, let me see why that one is longer, but probably because I dropped it. So, okay, so you're just going to continue to work all the way around on your four or five or whatever number of cords that you like. And that's what it's going to turn out like. And you're going to fasten off by slip stitching to the first one. And if you want to add a bead, then you just bring your needle through and attach a bead. And then I put a jump ring on here and I've added another little bead and the ear wire. And I have tutorials on my channel on how to make your own ear wires and how to make your own jump rings. So that is easy to find because it's in my jewelry playlist. So after you have it all worked up, usually I will just block these with uh, by submerging it in water. So I've just got a little container of water here that I brought like that. So if this was all finished, I would do this before I added the bead, but I just dip it in water like that. I just get this towel here. So then I would just place that down and 
if you wanted it round you would just place it down round like that and just get it arranged the way you like it and then just leave it dry it probably takes overnight to dry like that if you want an oval you just shape it into an oval and that's how easy it is to make some earrings that are very lightweight so they don't pull down on your ears and so you can make them in any color there's the black ones I didn't add anything extra to the black ones except an ear wire so that's some easy earrings that you can make nice Hmm. All right, so there's been a couple of other comments or questions that have come through while you were All right. <clears throat> going through. One of them is uh, from D Watts 40 What can you do with acrylic roving yarn? Someone gifted me 12 skeins and I have no idea what to do with it. Thank you. Do you know what roving yarn is? <clears throat> acrylic roving yarn. Well, I think it's um, a, a loose um, yarn that hasn't been twisted. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know all the um, proper terms for yarn but I don't know I think a roving yarn a lot of people use it for felting so they'll um, they'll felt little animals that, or you know like felting is a whole technique all on its own where you you take your it's acrylic yarn though can you felt with is, acrylic no you'd have to be wool okay, if, it's, so, you're, if you're going so to felt this it says acrylic roving yarn I don't know acrylic what that is acrylic roving yarn well I, I can't answer that one I wish I could because I'm not totally sure what roving yarn is mm -hmm. acrylic roving yarn all right so mama darling says will you be doing this every saturday because my coffee and i would love it oh my goodness <laughs> i would i'm you're lucky you're getting it this one time because my daughter is the one who brainwashed me into having it and i was very very reluctant because for one thing i'm really shy about being on camera and i'm not technologically inclined but she is so she said oh well, i'm going to handle it all for you so I really don't think I would put her to that but task I, of doing I, it every uh, week. I did tell her that she has to try it more than once before she decides to not do it anymore. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to talk her into doing it at least two more times, but maybe only once a month. But we'll see what... Um, just pay attention. Watch her, her upcoming That's videos. That's true. I'm, I will put a message on my videos. You know what's if going it's on going there. to happen again all right and so uh sojourners has another question um can you comment on how to handle mistakes in crocheting in other words let's say something goes wrong midway through do you rip it up or fix it it all depends on what the error is i have snuck myself an extra double crochet where i had gone too many rows to want to tear it out so i've taken an extra piece of yarn of the same color and then gone in between two double crochets. Um, where's my gray hat? I don't know where your gray hat is. Oh, there, there it is. is. Here it is. Here it is. So let's say that I had gotten this far and it was very crucial that I needed to have another double crochet here. I would probably take another piece of gray yarn and with my crochet hook, I would attach it in between these two double crochets and I would cheat. And make one more double crochet there and then with a needle probably attach it so that's how I would take care of that um, I'm just trying to think what other kind of an error there would be but I will tell you how to keep track of your rows very easily like if you're doing a shawl or something that has like oh 60 rows and you have to work 60 rows I have um, oh here we go I brought my things all in a bag because I didn't know. As you're working, if every tenth row or so, you, at the end of the row, you just slide in a marker. It can be, I just use bobby pins a lot, but it could be a stitch marker. If you, I'm economical, so I don't go out and buy things I can do, substitute something else for. So let's say you, at the end of row 10, you insert your first bobby pin. So then you work 10 more rows and you just insert another bobby pin. And then you work another 10 rows, or it could be four rows, whatever's more comfortable for you. Well, then when you're halfway through and you say, oh, gee, I don't know how many rows I've got done. You say, oh, 10, no, this would be your first 10. So you say, oh, 10, 20, 30, I've got 30 rows done. So then you can work on from there and just keep adding something to mark every 10th row. And then you can keep track of your rows easily without having to stop and count and count and count each time. So that's another tip that might be helpful. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Blind Stitch is Creations Inc. says that she also has her own crochet channel and she wanted to say thank you 
for motivating and inspiring her. Well, thank you very much. And if anybody else is interested, you can hop on over to Blind Stitch is Creations, is Creations Incorporated yeah. and see what she's got to offer on her channel. We need to all stick together. Everybody needs to promote everybody else. That's right. And so have a peek and see what she's got. Very I'll nice. be doing that myself later on. Um, Ronnie is wondering, will the this session be available on your channel so I can watch it again and share with others? Thank you, Lisa, for getting your mom to do this. Well, when we discussed the, the idea of the live stream, we did discuss mm -hmm. with not leaving it live on the channel. We'll probably leave it up for an hour or two so you can you know rewatch anything that you wanted to make notes about, but it won't be up permanently. It'll only be up for a short amount of time. Um, Mama Darling is giving you all kinds of hearts. Oh, thank you. And uh, we've got a thank you from HGIB3. Thank you for doing this. I'm always learning something new from you, Emmy. Well, thank you so much for watching. Very nice. Um, we've got thank you so much for this live chat, Emmy. And thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Uh, Linda says, I've been enjoying your live video. You provided so many tips. And um, thank you, Linda. Uh, and also, roving yarn is yarn that goes thick, thin, thin, or vice versa. Oh, yes, I know what you mean now. I, I had, you know, old brain, sometimes oh, well, we forget things. There's a lot but of things to know. So. Roving yarn makes a lovely scarf. It makes a lovely hat. It would work as a blanket, not one that you want to really stay warm in because the, the thin areas might not be as warm. Mm -hmm. But um, Scarves are very nice out of that. They are, yeah. and, and hat to match. Yeah, right. those are very nice. Um, so I do like the roving yarn for that type of thing. And baby hats are very cute in the roving yarn. Um, and also, Fiona said thank you for the question that you just helped me too. Okay. And Jacqueline Murray said that's excellent. She's always making little faults. Okay. So that was a good tip. Um, and Sharon T says, how do you keep your starting chain from twisting when you have a long chain? Well, that's a good question too. Let's see here. Just give me one second. I'm just going to edit one thing before you start. So you can tell us uh, what it is you're doing here. And we'll, we, this might be a clip for later. You can rewatch this one. She'll put it on her channel. Yeah. How to keep, you go ahead and tell us what you're doing. So if you have a long, a long starting chain, a long foundation chain, then... And, I, and I mean, it's twisting. I, why, don't you, why don't you just give an intro? Tell us what you're doing. Okay, I'm, I am just making a chain right now, a foundation chain. But the other thing, too, is that if you're having to start with, if you're making, for instance, a, um, a bag, and you're going to have a really long foundation chain, but you want to make sure that you don't twist it. I mean, I know there are some people who take their hook out periodically, and then they, because it's easy to do this when you haven't gone very far, they put their hook back into their first single crochet and then they go back into that stitch and then they just continue to work their chain and their chain is never ever going to twist because you've got it Locked. trapped here on your hook so whenever your chain is as long as you need it you just slip stitch and there you go you have your round of chain without having it twisted very often for myself I will just have my foundation chain. I just find this the easiest, but that's because most times I might have forgotten how to uh, remember to go back and put it on my hook. I usually just run it through my finger like that, and you can feel the bump on the one side and the smooth on the other. So then I just go ahead and do that and then slip stitch. But if you're doing something that's really long foundation chain, like a shawl, it might be easier to start with the chainless foundation and that would be, you don't chain, you don't have a starting chain, which is great too, because it has a better edge if you have done that. So you start with your, your um, slip knot and you chain two to make your foundation. I don't know, can you see good enough here? Yeah. Okay, so you go into that very first stitch, the same as you would be if you were going to single crochet there. So you insert your hook and you bring up the yarn and so then you take one stitch, and that's actually your chain stitch. And then you finish your single crochet. So to do the next one, you go back down to that, what I said was a chain stitch, but it's easy to remember because it's the second stitch from the hook. And you go into there, and you pull up the yarn, and you make your chain stitch, and then you finish your single crochet. I'm going to do that again. I'll do it a few times here and show you how that looks because it's a way to start something that you haven't, you don't want to make a foundation chain and it's stretchier for some reason and you have a nice 
edge on your bottom and you haven't had to make a foundation chain you've just gone ahead and one done the single crochet chainless single crochet you can do that with double crochets half double crochets treble crochet you again you just do it the same way like if I were doing a double crochet chainless I would have been working with this height because that's my double crochet so I would yarn around my hook the same as if I was going to make a double crochet and again I would go down to that chain stitch and I would take pull it up and then make my chain and then continue and make my double crochet the same as usual and so for the next double crochet yarn around the hook go down to that stitch that I called a chain pull up the yarn now pull up the yarn one more time and that's your chain and then finish your double crochet then it works the same for the trebles and the half doubles so you can go ahead and you can do like 120 stitches and you did not have to make a foundation chain you've just done the chainless foundation row so I hope that helps people and maybe if I haven't been clear enough on that I could do a tutorial on just that nice hmm. all right More than and, any other uh, questions Emmy's uh, Zellander J3 says, oh. <laughs> you were my first teacher thank you 10 years strong you know I actually <laughs> commented on, on somebody's video one day and I said you did a great job and she said well thank you very much I learned to crochet from you so isn't that interesting she learned to crochet from my channel and she has her own crochet channel right on you can do that too <clears throat> And you too. Fiona wonders, do you prefer the stitch foundation chain or just a regular starting chain? Oh, because I am a creature of habit, I generally do just work the foundation chain. But if I had, to, I don't usually, I don't follow any patterns very well, so I usually have to design my own. So if I'm going to make a shawl, I really don't want to chain 160 and work a row of 160 stitches every row. So I generally will try to work my uh, shawls side to side instead of bottom up right. unless it's uh, unless i can achieve a better lacy look so i usually stick to the old foundation chain uh and suzanne says i just want to say the way you've done this is amazing with help from lisa oh i couldn't have done it without <laughs> well, lisa but where others don't have something helping you someone helping you the podcast just goes silent reading and then does not explain the answers to the questions oh so i see sometimes they just read the question and then they say the answer but well i you mean, don't know what question uh, yeah that's that is thankful to lisa to knowing how to do that <laughs> she said she was going to do that and i immediately thought well that is perfect because Again, I've said it a little while ago, I have a hearing problem. So lots of times if people aren't actually showing the words, I may not really right. understand what the question was. Or... And we have one more one more thank you. Um, and her name's Zelda. That's a great name. I that love is, your name. Yeah. So Zeld, Zeld and, Zelda and or, her J3. Or J. Zelda. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm just going to say thank you to Emmy for being a good sport today well, and doing this live And thank you to stream. everyone for dropping in. And we uh, couldn't have done it without you. Watch her channel for more news about the next live stream and please encourage her to do another one because I know she this was way less scary than she thought it was going to be. Well, uh, I don't know. In the beginning I was awfully nervous, but and okay, okay. And my shakes have gone away. <laughs> So we're going to have a cup of tea now. We're going to stop the stream and uh, hopefully see you guys next time we do a live stream. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for dropping by. All right. Bye-bye.